What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures and we are right now in the middle of a crazy cool trip through Oregon and the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we're up here for Overland Expo Pacific Northwest, but we decided to come up here early. <laughs> we decided to come up here early and really just dive into the area, get to know it. Um, and there, there's four of us now on this trip. Uh, we got myself and Kara in both of our rigs. And then we've got our friends, uh, Danielle and Katie in their rigs. Danielle has a Land Rover Defender 110 with a rooftop tent and an awning and uh, some stuff in the back. Katie is in a fourth gen Forerunner, and she's rocking a ground tent on this trip. She's actually been here, how many weeks have you been here? Four already? Four. Four already, she's already been here four. So she's been here longer than we have, and she's just been out and like all by herself. Um, and then of course, I've got the Gladiator with rooftop tent and all the gear in the back, and Kara's rocking the Wrangler with our new uh, off-track Phoenix camper on it. So what we're gonna do in this video, we've got four completely different setups, and I'm gonna let each one of us talk about why we're, we're doing the rig that we are and the setup that we are because they're, they're all different. I figure I'll start with the Gladiator because it's the only, it's the only truck in the group. Uh, my Gladiator's been well documented on the channel, so I'm not gonna go into all the nitty gritty details. But if you've watched the channel at all, you know I freaking love the Gladiator. It is, in, in, for me and for, for my point of view, it's the best, most incredible overlanding rig that you can buy. Not only does it have the capabilities of a truck to build it out for overlanding and gear storage and all, all that aspect of it, but it's also, you know, pretty much half Wrangler. So it's got the incredible off-road capability uh, to go just about anywhere you want to go. Uh, so far, I have not been limited in this rig, especially from an overlanding standpoint. I've never been limited in where I can get to. Kara has run some trails in her Wrangler from a rock crawling standpoint that the Gladiator would have struggled on. So it, it's a balance. I can't rock crawl as well as Kara can in her Wrangler, but I can go just about anywhere else from an overlanding standpoint that I want to. I'll give you a quick rundown on the specs of the Gladiator. It is sitting on a three and a half inch Clayton off-road um, premium lift kit. Uh, that is paired with Elka's remote reservoir adjustable shocks, which are absolutely, that, that combination is unbelievable as far as the comfort level of this thing on road and on the trails. 38 inch Milestar Patagonia MT-02s, which have proven to be a very solid tire for us. Kara's running the exact same tires. But the magic of the Gladiator all happens back here. So I've got the Extrusion Overland bed rack. This is actually the Ozark Overland Edition. Uh, they, they named this rack after, after, after us. Um, and I love this rack because it allows me to easily mount and access all of my stuff, a traditional rack that has regular panels back here, you, you can't access your stuff here. So these flip up sides, the ability to um, do other creative things like my uh, recovery gear storage box over there. Um, th this is just the most amazing rack ever. And it, when I got this rack, it, it changed my whole setup. Uh, right here, I've got the SHW half width full drawer slide. So all of my camping gear, uh, even chair, all my kitchen stuff is in this drawer. As you can see, it comes all the way out. So I have easy access to all of my gear. And it is, I mean, we've been on some dusty, nasty trails on this trip so far and everything in here is clean. So yeah, this, this has been the real test of how well this drawer seals out the dust. And this is honestly my first time looking into it and, and I'm very happy. Uh, everything in here is dust free. Right beside it, I've got my Iceco APL 55. It's a 55 liter fridge. Um, I like this just because of the access in the Gladiator. Uh, it opens from this way. It has a soft closing lid. And it, uh, it, this, this is a little easier than a side opening 
um, fridge for me. Uh, this is all on a Global Road Outdoors kitchen slide. So this slides out, this one slides out. You can still get the fridge to slide out. And so this is real handy for just having great kitchen space. And then over here, I've got two 100 amp hour anti-gravity batteries uh, that you can see the little box right there with the green light. That's my Renergy 2000 watt inverter. It's over there mounted to the side of the drawer system. I've got my Morflate 106 air compressor, but the 200 amp hour batteries, they are charged. You can't see it. There's a little red light in there. There's a little red light right there. Uh, that's a Red Arc BCDC 1250. That keeps this whole setup charged and I'm never wanting for power. Uh, got this shelf back here from also Extrusion Overland. I just kind of DIY'd this with some front runner boxes. So all my tools are in here, extra camping gear, extra blankets, just kind of extra stuff is in that tote over there, that front runner box. And, and this is just the, the most amazing overlanding setup. Uh, I've got camp lights from Morimoto. These are the two bangers, uh, one bangers on the back, little cheap Amazon lights here that I mounted to the, the top of my eye camper um, for, for camp lights. Uh, this, the, the tent that I'm, I'm using now is the new eye camper BDV. It is a wedge style tent. We're not sleeping in my tent tonight, so I'm not opening it. We're sleeping in Kara's eye camper, but this is the new BDV. And so far I'm in love with this tent. Uh, I'll be doing a full walk around and full review of this tent later, but for right now, just, I, I, I freaking love it. And then the back seat of the Gladiator, it's a hot mess in here right now. Uh, I've got the SHW 60% rear seat delete. So it gives me a very nice platform to store all of my gear on top of it. And then when I need to, I've got storage in there for right now. I've just got other type of gear. I've got towels and, um, tools, jumper cables and stuff like that in there. But I've got lots of great space in here to keep all of the stuff. All right, so that's my Gladiator um, in a nutshell. They're, they're, like I said, I've got full detailed build, build videos of this thing. So go, go check those out if you want more info. But that's why I will the Gladiator. Because for an overland rig, it's freaking awesome. All right, so this is Danielle's Defender 110. It's a 2023, 20, isn't it? Yeah. So. Tell us why the Defender, and then what you've done to it, why you like the rooftop tent setup that you have, and, and all those little details. Um, well, we just like Land Rovers in general. Because y'all like fixing things. Yeah, because we like fixing things. <laughs> we like older Land Rovers uh, in particular. We do have this 2023 Land Rover we got last September. Um, and this thing's, this thing's fully loaded. Like, it came snorkel from the factory. We spec'd it out. Yeah. Yeah, we spec'd it out, so it came with a snorkel, um, came with onboard air. Um, there were some things that we added to it. We, we added the rock sliders to it, of course. Um, it did not come with that. Um, Land Rover, they come with 20-inch wheels. Um, we did, we were able to get it down to 18-inch wheels and we put the Falcon all-terrains on. Um, to put the 18 inch wheels on, you do have to grind down the calipers because even after you grind down the calipers to get the 18 inch wheels on, I mean, you have a couple millimeters left. And, gotcha. Um, but it works. Um, and you're running what, 33 inch tires? Yeah, 33s. Um, but yeah, and then uh, we love our, we put the roof rack on. What, uh, actually, uh, what roof rack is that? So that actually came from Land Rover. Okay, it's a Land Rover yeah, roof rack. Yeah, that came from Land Rover. So, we put our eye camper on top of that. Um, we always, you know, for 30 years, we tent camped, but um, I really like being able to get up off the ground, especially when I'm solo overlanding. I just, I like to be off the ground. Um, and so, so it's kind of nice having that up there. Um, we mounted the, the Bush Company 270 Max awning. Uh, <clears throat> really like that. And that's a freestanding, you don't have to put poles down. That's a big beefy awning that yeah. can with, take the wind, right? Yeah, it can take the wind. Um, yeah, so we swing that all the way around. Um, I really love that. That's been excellent. Um, now show me what you got in the back. So in the back, um, 
We put in the front runner table. Um, we have the we have the ARB fridge. Um, we have the slide in here. The onboard air compressor is over here. Um, is that a factory option? It's factory. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So we, you can see this here. So up underneath this, we made this board here. We took off uh, what came with it. So up underneath here um, is where we have our, we have a 120 amp hour um, anti-gravity battery. Um, over here, I don't know how well you can see. Let me get my water out. Um, so over here we have, we do have, we used to run an inverter off, off of it. We used to have the goal zero. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we, we have, we installed this switch ourselves um, to charge the inverter when we were driving, but then we got the anti-gravity battery. Um, so right now, currently what this switch does is we have a 110 outlet here. Um, and so if I want to use the 110 outlet, I can flip it on. And then we also, <coughs> put back here some USB ports, 12 volt. So are your back seats down or did you do a seat delete? Uh, back seats, so we took out the seats. I can open over here. Uh, so we took out the seat bottom and then the, the back of the seats drop all the way down. So we didn't do like a... So not a true seat delete, but you remove the rear cushion so the back can lay flat and lower. So it lays totally okay. flat, yeah. I like how you've got the clothing boxes here for... Yeah, I like it for storing different things. Um, you got a new water system up here that you've used on this trip for the first time. I have. So tell us about that. Yeah. So one of our friends sent us this link and said, hey, I got, um, I got this thing off walmart.com. It's $100 off, regular $150. Um, I can show you how it works, uh, and it's a hundred dollars off, so it's $49.99. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to buy that because that's where our goal zero used to go. So I have just this extra space in there. Um, it does run off of 12 volt. It also has a battery. So I have the battery. So it has its own battery. It has its own battery. And it has a pump in it. And it has a pump in it. So I just reach around. It's got a long hose too. Yeah, it has a long hose. That's awesome. Yeah. And so So 50 bucks from Walmart. 50 bucks from Walmart.com on sale. And then it just stays there. Um, the battery charged up. It says it will pump uh, 38 gallons. It holds five. Um, but it says one battery charge will hold 38 gallons. Um, so yeah, I like it because I can actually like wash this hair. So that's a big game changer for me to be able to watch my Well, I know you've taken you and your daughter did a six week trip through the Pacific Northwest last fall. Now you're on this trip. You do a lot of solo stuff and this rig has served you well. It really has. It's it really it's done well it. on this trip. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love it. This is our friend Katie. She is rocking what year is your forerunner? An 05. An 05 fourth gen forerunner. Uh, it's the V6? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Katie's big claim to fame is that she has completed the Rebel Rally with her teammate, Lisa. Uh, they ran it Attica. last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're running it again this year. Yes. Here in just a few months. Yep. And last year, this is the forerunner that completed the Rebel Rally. Yeah. So, um, you've been out here for four weeks already. Mm -hmm. um, you sleep in a ground tent. So show me your show me the setup of this Rebel Rally completing Forerunner and your personal overlanding rig. Okay. And wh why you chose to you know why there's not a rooftop tent on top? Why you sleep in a ground tent? G give us that sort of stuff. Okay. So um, it is set up a little bit in mind of the rally, but um, when we were outfitting them for the rally, we did take into mind that I'd be overlanding with it afterwards. Um, so I reserve all my roof rack space for storage. Um, typically it's items that I may not take out every night uh, or even just a couple items here or there. So some of my camping gear, uh, lights, things like that. Um, my shower water, all my recovery gear and my tools is in that Pelican case. Um, I've got my firewood up on top. There's also a bike mount if I would have brought my mountain bike. So 
I like to reserve all that for all the things um, that I don't need on hand. On the inside, it's all my food, sleeping stuff, clothes. Um, in the back in the drawers, it's mostly like uh, my jet boil, quick grab food items, things that uh, I'll be making when I'm just sleeping overnight. Gotcha. Now, I know you've got goose gear in the back, mm -hmm. so we're going to check that out in a minute. You've got a solar panel here on the hood. Yes. This uh, is a Cascadia 4x4. What is this going to? So it's going to the Manager 30 Red Vision uh, Red Arc. Setup. Okay. With what batteries do you have back uh, there? I have one of the V2 100 amp hour uh, anti-gravity batteries. Okay. You've got one of the batteries that I have. Yep. It's one of the 100. I thought yeah. it was the two, the 200, but it's not. Oh, okay. It. And I was like, damn. But that's, pl that's plenty to run what you need to run. Because my 200 is honestly overkill, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't ever have to worry about power, so that's great. All right, let's uh, let's go to the back. Okay. Okay. In the back, you've got a whole goose gear system here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so I chose to do the double dra double drawers and the camp kitchen setup. So it has the full fridge slide, uh, and then it also has the grill slide on the bottom, um, and then a lot of my uh, quick grab cooking utensils and things are available in the drawers and then underneath my trash room when I'm traveling long distances I carry this on the inside. I noticed that. Um, it's just a personal preference because now it's on the inside. Right That's here. smart. That's real handy. I never thought about that before. Um, and I also don't typically need my table so I have a little fold down table in here. Okay. Uh, but I'll take it off whenever I'm uh, going to be staying somewhere for a long period of time. But um, most of my bottom drawer is uh right now it's extra drink carrying stuff but i mean that's important yeah you know beers yeah mixers things drink coffee. storage is critical uh but i have a, a lot of like my spill kit uh my triangles for the road batteries gaffers tape extra stuff things like that stuff you need to access quick yep and then uh, top is more of my cooking. So I've got emergency meals, jet foil, plates, um, cutting board, things like that. Uh, you know, koozies, mm -hmm. <laughs> three different types and sizes of koozies. So <laughs> that's most important. Fire starters, uh, glow sticks, things like that, and my speaker. But um, that way I can just set up my cooking space right here. I usually do a lot of my chopping on my bumper and then just cook it up and it's good to go. It takes me just a couple seconds to uh, fix up and then it goes back in uh, and I can close it back up. I like it. Yeah. And for sleeping, you're in a, a front runner ground tent? Mm-hmm. So. Is this a quick setup type of tent? Yeah. I like the front runner ground tent because you just fold it into a taco and then it folds on down into itself. So um, setting this up literally took five minutes and the longest part was just airing up my mattress um, because I use the Born Outdoors um, bed roll. Yeah, I saw that at Expo West last so, year. That's really cool. I like it because it has actual sheets and blankets. Uh, so it's just a little bit more comfy cozy. And then this is pretty much everything that I bring into my tent. My, um, air up so that if I start to get flat in cold environments in the middle of the night I can pump it back up a light and then I'll bring in a power bank for my phone and my earbuds and that's pretty much it awesome simple yeah. I love it well I love your forerunner it is it, it has served you well okay y'all know my wife Kara and her beautiful Wrangler boo dirty right now. very dirty we're all very dirty right now <laughs> but Kara is doing something different than what she has done in the past. Yeah. Because you have had a rooftop tent on your rig. I have at certain points. At point, it's yes. Not something that I keep on there. I don't know. Why? Feel like that. Why? Um, I do more technical trails, so I like less weight on my vehicle. Um, you know, Rhino Rack, the backbone system that I have on there, it allows me to put a platform on and off real quick with it's my. It's currently hanging in our garage. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. And it's, it's great for that. But since I got the trailer, it's been perfect for me because that's just, it's an ideal setup. So we've been on this trip for about two weeks now. Mm -hmm. How's the trailer doing? It's doing amazing. I mean, there's obviously the hills, the gas mileage. I'm usually in the front of the pack setting the pace. Um, so, I mean, you're definitely going to have some balance with that. But, I mean, for what I want to do, I think it's perfect. Um, I've driven with the trailer all the way to Wisconsin and other places, Mayor's Adventure Park. Um, 
So I've gotten pretty used to the setup and I love it. So walk us through walk us through the trailer real quick. This is not gonna be the full blown walk around video, okay. but just why you like having the trailer. Okay. And just the quick and easy access and drop it at camp, that oh. that sort of thing. I love being able to have my tent, just I deploy that out. I have the iCamper SkyCamp 3.0 on here now, love the tent. And then we have the awning on the other side. It's nice to be able to raise that, deploy it over there. Um, and then I can just take off and I don't have the weight that I would have with a rooftop tent. So the other day at camp, I wanted to take a shower after hiking. Boom, there's shower in here. I could just shower. So it's just a one-stop shop for me. Everything is super easy to access. Oh, yeah. And ready to go. Yep, ready to go. You need any gear, boom, yep. we've got the garage, mm -hmm. hot water go. heater, if we need a shower. And she actually is cooking dinner on the other side. You'll see that in a minute. So we have the gas set up here. Ample storage for oh. you and Goose. So much storage. We call this the garage. Yeah. No, that's the garage. Oh, right. that's the garage. This is more just storage. This is more just storage. Yeah, there's storage up top and then there's storage down below. Um, Got plenty of power from the 200 amp hour batteries down here. Yeah, and I really like that I can pull it up even whenever I'm up in my tent. And I can just see that I'm charged 100%. My water tanks are there. And if I want to turn on the cabin lights, I can do that. Um, all from here, work light in the back if I need to ever use a light here there's lights all around this thing but yeah it's nice i love I can, having the red vision for yeah this thing. it's nice that i can turn it off um and then if there's bugs or bad you can just sit there and hold that and it changes it to amber so that's really nice for whenever there's bugs but we don't have bugs up here so it's so far so far we don't and i loved when we were in the swell that when it was time for lunch oh yeah we just popped this open yeah, open the fridge the boom yeah because there's not trees over there um, and then we have my whole pantry here. There was zero setup time. Mm -hmm. You just None. opened it up. We made sandwiches. We yep. had lunch under the awning and it was quick and easy. And we didn't even use like a lot of my utensils. We just had some paper plates and then we just pulled out for some chips and we opened the fridge, which is on the other side of this kitchen area. Um, so yeah. All right, now let's talk about the back of your Wrangler because yep. you do still go out. Yeah. So you need storage, you need some Recovery fridge you need you know all that sort of stuff so how you've got the back laid out so i have this it's kind of a little bit different for this trip because me and danielle are taking four weeks after expo to hit the road on the west coast so i have everything everywhere right now um so this side um it actually has my toilet because if i ever go out without my anything here i always keep a toilet on me um, then I have my clean wipes, so I have a little chair. Uh, the SHW ultralight drawers are perfect back here because if for, you don't want to add a bunch of weight, so they're only 40 pounds mm -hmm. yep. and allow you to stay organized. Yep, and then like another thing that I like about it is if ever I'm around a picnic table, I can just take it out, boom, have this as like a little tote. Uh, actually, while you got that out, yep. you do have power in here. I We've do. got two 50 amp hour batteries. Yep that right now is running the little fridge. We've got USB ports over there. We've got a whole walk, a whole detailed install video on this, but we've got plenty of power in the back of the Wrangler. Yep. And I have a fridge obviously in the trailer, but for whenever I am going off, I like to have this little small set power. It just holds just like some of my favorite protein shakes. And then um, fruit snacks and some other things, just small little things that I can take with me on the road. And recovery gears up here in the Magellan bags. Yep, I have recovery gear on this side, and then I just have extra stuff over here. Um, oh, you got those new bags. Yes. Let's I do show those real quick. David with amazing. Yeah, bags. let's show those real quick. All right. Well, we've been on this trip for a while, so the back of the Wrangler is kind of a hot mess right now. Total hot mess. But uh, you got new new kind of saddle bags. These are actually there. called the side stashers. The side stashers. Yeah, with um, David May's amazing life. I know you've. Been he designed those. Yes. And really. did a really cool job. So yeah, what do you have in that one? It takes over this whole back panel and then it's attached to my bars and it has a plate in the bottom that would give more structure. Um, this side has a rumple bag. Oh gosh. I mean, I could, do you want me to keep pulling it out? I mean, just, just tell us. Okay. Cause it goes well, way back. Like there's like six towels. Like there's all your towels for six the trip. Towels. Yeah. At least, um, lots of towels in there. And that, and, yeah. And there's one on this side too. Yep. What? I have a hammock over there that whole setup with my hammock because I do like the hammock camp. Yep, all the hammock set up here. I'm gonna have light covers. Yep, um, her, her amber light covers are right back there. Yep. But these are incredibly handy. Molly. 
So yep. if you want to add any of that. Molly webbing here for additional storage. Yeah. Little Molly panels up here in front. Like for flashlights and stuff. And they zip up on both sides. You can access it here and in the back. Yeah, uh, these are a big step up from those uh, cheap Amazon bags that I used to run in my Wrangler. Yeah, and it's nice because that's just unused space. Exists. So you can just use this whole air little section. I had looked at taking and putting the whole, like there's a Jeep Gullwing out that's available now. And I really actually like these a little bit better just because they're more pliable and so you can fit the towels and everything else in them. The fact that you've got six towels in there plus other stuff and yeah. the, it's super handy. Cause that's, cause place. otherwise you wouldn't be able to st stack a bunch of stuff up in here. No. So, yeah. Yep. It's a mess. It's a sweet setup. I love it. All right, well, there you go. Four different overlanding setups. No way is the right way. No way is the wrong way. It's all personal preference. And I think everybody's uh, done a really good job of, of saying, why? why? Why do we run this different setup? Uh, there's, there's some, look, there's some dude over there with the, with the Volkswagen Westie. Those are the coolest things ever. You can, I mean, you can do that. And on the other side of that, there's a Sprinter van. Uh, we, we've been around a Sprinter van recently and that's uh, very tempting. So, uh, but if, if you have any questions about any of these builds, put them in the comments. Let us know, let, let us know your preference. Do you like the, the rooftop tent? So you just always got your stuff and you're ready to go. Do you like the ground tent? Because you can leave it behind and it's lightweight and minimalist. Or do you like the off-road trailer? because everything's there. It's just all contained and boom, ready to deploy. So everything has its pros and cons and we, we love all these. So um, thanks for watching. Like I said, if you've got questions, put them in the comments. Uh, like the video if you would, subscribe to the channel. If you're not, help us reach the goal of 100,000 by the end of 2023. Um, check out our Patreon. If you like what we're doing and you want to support the channel, get access to special content, special events, all of our GPS data, like where all we're going on this trip, the campsites and stuff that we found, and for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise, go to shopoverlandapparel.com. All the links are in the description. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.